Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about what really causes gallstones. Okay, there's a myth out there that a high fat diet will cause gallstones. That is absolutely not true. So let's go into that a little bit more. Most stones are cholesterol stones. Okay, so it's a concentrated amount of cholesterol because there's not enough bile. So the real deep underlying cause of a gallstone is bile deficiency. Bile is a fluid that is made in the liver and concentrated in the gallbladder by 20x. And it's used to help you extract nutrients from the food, especially like extracting the fat soluble vitamins, essential fatty acids, and then the pancreas releases enzymes to help break it down even more. So really the underlying cause of gallstones are a lack of bile because bile keeps the stone from developing. It keeps uh, cholesterol from forming a stone. And also it disposes of excess cholesterol. So bile is very, 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 very important. Okay. And if you had your gallbladder out, um, you're going to be deficient in bile even more because now you don't have a sac to allow the bile to be concentrated. So the original reason probably they took it out is you had stones and now they take it out and now we have a deficiency of bile even more. It trickles down. So you might switch the problem from a stone to a, another problem of a lack of absorption of fat soluble vitamins or omega-3 fatty acids or an essential fat called DHA, which is good for your brain and your heart. So it's hard to pull all those in. So without bile, it's like washing your hands without soap. Now, let me talk about things that can trigger the loss or deficiency of bile. Okay. So these are not direct causes. They're indirect causes because they have to then do things that then decrease bile. So high levels of estrogen can decrease bile and increase your risk of getting stones from hormone replacement therapy, birth control, being pregnant. All of these actions can increase your chance of getting a stone because it depletes bile. And by the way, the symptoms of low bile would be bloating, uh, indigestion, um, gas, constipation because bile acts as a lubricant, also right shoulder pain, headaches on the right side, pain in the upper trap on the right side, pain in the scapula on the right side, anything on the right side because it can swell up and be congested and cause a triggering of a nerve that goes right up into this side of your body. I put some links down below for more information about that. High levels of cortisol can also uh, deplete your bile. Cortisol is a stress hormone, so stress can increase your risk of stones because it decreases bile. And that can also include medication type cortisol like prednisone, for example, because one of the side effects is it increases your chance of getting a stone. This is a biggie. Increase of insulin can deplete your bile. I mean, a lot of people have too much insulin, probably 60 to 70% of the population. So the thing that triggers insulin is, of course, the carbs, frequent eating. But here's, an, here's one point I want to bring up. When you combine um, carbs or bread or pasta with protein or carbs, sugar with fat, you greatly exaggerate the release of insulin. So if you're doing a high fat diet with a high sugar diet, in many of the experiments they do with mice, and they're calling it a high fat diet when really it's a high sugar and a high fat diet, but they don't tell you that, you're gonna find that probably you're gonna find problems with uh, gallstones or a lot of other side effects. But the point is, higher amounts of fat with low sugar, low carb, it's totally safe. It does not create a problem. It's the combination of the higher fat with the high sugar or the combination of higher protein with sugar together that's deadly. Okay, so anyway, we want to keep our insulin low if we want to prevent gallstones. Low-fat diets, low-fat diets, vegan diets basically don't have enough saturated fats to trigger enough bile. So this is interesting because people think that it's the fat that causes the problem, but saturated fats is the thing that triggers the release of bile. You need saturated fats. So I personally experienced this in college when I made some meatloaf, okay? And my grandmother was really great at making meatloaf. She sent me the, uh, uh, the recipe. I didn't read it. I scanned it. It said take uh, like a pound of hamburger, take uh, some bread, 
bre yeah, bread. Mix it together, bake it, put some ketchup on it, right? So I didn't read the fine line, which says drain all the grease out of it. I just kept the grease in there. Like all the bread just soaked it up like a sponge. And I ate that whole thing. Now think about it. I combined all the saturated fat with the protein, with the bread. Deadly combination, massive spike of insulin. Um, I had a gallbladder attack. I thought I had a stone, but it was just a gallbladder attack. And um, in the middle of the night. So um, basically if I kept doing that, it would eventually develop stones. But a low fat diet, uh, will increase your chance of, of developing a stone because you don't have enough bile. So don't be afraid of the saturated fat as long as you keep your carbs low. All right, so the next thing is a fatty liver, which by the way comes from high levels of insulin though. Now if there's too much fat in the liver, it's going to obstruct the function of the liver. And to that degree, you're not going to be able to make bile because bile is made by the liver cells. So if half of it is fatty, that means you get half of the production of bile. So Really, this could be a culprit in why a person develops stones. It's a fatty liver. How do you know if you have a fatty liver? Just look down at your stomach. If you have a gut, you probably have a fatty liver. But the best way is to get an ultrasound and just check it out. Antiacids can also disrupt your um, ability to make bile and use bile. And so what happens is the reason why you need to take antiacids in the first place is you don't have enough acid. Now, if this sounds strange for you, watch the video down below on an acidic stomach because what causes that is a low stomach acids. I know, sounds strange, but what happens when you don't have enough stomach uh, acid, what happens the valve doesn't close and the acid comes up. If you have enough acid in your stomach, the valve closes nicely and you don't feel the acid reflux. So the fact that you need antiacids tells me that you don't have enough stomach acid. And stomach acid is one of the triggers for the bile to release from the gallbladder, okay? So anyway, if you don't have enough of that trigger coming from the stomach, this can actually really create a dysfunctional gallbladder and create a whole uh, series of problems, a chain reaction that occurs just because the stomach pH is not correct. And one last thing, if you're not consuming enough vegetables, you're not gonna be able to feed your microbes in your large intestine the food that they need to help manifest the quantities of microbes that you need to help recycle bile. So 90% or 95% of all the bile is recycled and a big portion of that is done by the friendly microbes in your gut. So if you don't have those microbes there, um, that could be the reason why you can't recycle bile. Another common cause, okay? Don't have enough bile, you start increasing your risk of getting stones. All right, anyway, I hope this helped you understand what's really behind the stones and put your comments down below. I'm curious what you think about this.